Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting Starry Night Lavender Field and I'm sipping on some Earl Grey tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks such as this one. <laughs> so this painting that I did today is inspired by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreon members by the name of Amber Paxton. So I have a benefit available for my Patreon members whereby every now and again I'm going to put out a call a, a call to them for photos. They submit their photos. I'll take some of those and turn them into YouTube tutorials. And as a thank you, I send the original painting off to whoever submitted the photo. So I hope Amber enjoys this. I'm sure she would enjoy taking the photo because it looks like such a cool place to be. Um, but hopefully she enjoys the painting too. Um, so if you would like to learn how you two could submit your photos for me to turn into uh, tutorials and or learn more about the Patreon membership program where there's a bunch of other benefits that you get to use that will help you to increase your painting and artistic skills. I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 20 inch by 16 inch canvas. If you're painting along, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. For my materials today, I have acrylic paint. The colors I'm going to be using are titanium white, deep yellow, fire red, Mars black, cobalt blue, and purple violet. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number one bristle fan brush. So this is natural bristles for that. And then I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I might well, I was going to say I might re refer to these as small, medium, and large, but I'll probably just call them out because we have the fan brush, which it sounds funny calling it medium. <laughs> so you can certainly switch these up if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. If you're going to paint along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I do provide you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's, uh, you can also, so there, that link will take you to my shop and you can purchase things in my shop individually too, like the brushes from my brush line. So that's there. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so what we're going to do for the first step is we're going to paint a base coat onto the canvas. I'm going to be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm going to use my number two round to demonstrate how to premix a custom color. The colors we're going to use in this step are blue, black, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to premix myself a dark blue color that we'll be using as the base coat onto the canvas. So I have magically premixed my dark blue here on my palette so you can see where I'm headed. So what this is, is it's mostly cobalt blue, and then I have a little bit of black to darken it, and then a touch of white to help with the opacity, which means it'll help it to not be so see-through. So I'm in essence adding dark gray to my uh, cobalt blue in order to make it this really nice dark blue that we can use as a base coat for the entire painting. So once I've got that pre-mixed, I am going to put my mixing tool away, take out my large brush, and just paint the entire canvas. So because I have a light canvas, my canvas is white, and I am using a dark color on top of it, you, the um, likelihood of you seeing some streaks 
is going to be very good. <laughs> so you're probably going to see some of that canvas kind of popping through. You're going to have light marks. You're going to have dark marks, which is okay because all this is is the base coat that's kind of toning our our canvas and it will allow us to build all of our really cool details on top of it in a easier way than trying to develop colors um, specifically in every tiny little spot of the canvas for itself. So this this will help because there's a lot of the sky is going to have a lot of dark blue in it. Even the field of lavenders has got a lot of what I see as dark blue within those flowers. So we're just going to use this to help jumpstart all of the painting details um, within within the canvas. So once I've got the whole canvas covered, what I like to do is just take my brush with light pressure because my paint is still wet and just go back and forth left to right. This will help me level out the paint. It will help me catch any spots that I might have missed. It'll also help me get rid of what I refer to as cut marks, which is where your brush kind of stops midway during the brush stroke. And then we will be using this same brush for the next step. You don't need to do a second coat on this because again, we'll be doing a lot of other information on top of it. So it's okay if it doesn't look perfect at this point. And then you can just wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna be using my number two round to premix one more custom color. So I'm calling this the sky because I'm gonna be painting the air, <laughs> the, the full scope of the sky. I'm gonna paint it in the layers that I feel it is made up of. So first, it's gonna be the actual sky sky off in the distance, then the stars come, and then the atmospheric clouds and stuff like that will be in front. So we're going to paint it in those three different layers to it. So this first step is just the sky, no stars, no clouds, no atmospheric dimensions, so just the sky. So I'm going to create a gradient, a darker color at the top, which is going to be with my dark blue, and then a I'm going to grade it to a lighter um, color down by the horizon. I will be using in this step my dark blue, red, yellow, cobalt blue, and white. And I'm going to pre-mix myself a custom color that I'm going to call tan, and that's going to be the light color down at the bottom of the sky by, by the atmosphere or by the um, horizon line. So I have magically pre-mixed my tan color on my palette here, so you can see where I'm headed. So what this is made up of is yellow. Uh, red and blue and white. So if you were to take equal parts of yellow, uh, red and blue, you're going to get some sort of brown color. So what I've done, I wanted it pretty darn light um, and with a nice warm um, hue to it. So what I've done is I've made mostly yellow and white is what this color combination is, but the red is going to add kind of a little orangey tinge to it and the blue, just a dot of blue, is going to bring it into that brown sp spectrum. So again, just a teeny tiny bit of the blue. You can always adjust it, adding more, like obviously I need to add more um, red to this because I was a little overzealous with my yellow. <laughs> I know it's going to be mostly yellow, but that was a little, that was a little bit too much. So we're just adding a little bit more red. And I just add a dot at a time because that's where I can control myself. And this is too orange. So that tells me I need another dot of blue into it. And that's how you can really just adjust your colors. Red and blue is going to make purple, adding a little bit uh, or some form of purple. Adding that yellow into it is going to bring it into a brownish state. And you can see here as I just keep mixing it, I'm getting really close to where I want. I think I want a touch more white and a touch more blue in there, just an itty bitty bit of blue. And my blue that I'm using, cobalt blue, has a lot of yellow in it already. So I just need a teeny tiny bit to um, steer myself and maybe just a tiny touch of red too. There we go. So my tan that I've made is almost like a skin color. 
um, just so you have kind of a barometer as to what kind of tan I am making. So once I've got that color, I am ready to start painting. Typically on my gradients, I go from dark to light, but I really want to have high contrast in this gradient, um, and I don't want my blue at the top to taint my tan that's going to be at the bottom. So today, I'm going from the bottom of my gradient up. So my gradient is going to start a little bit below my halfway mark. So I'm going to put a little bit of that tan on my brush. I'm going to find myself about halfway up or down on the left-hand side for me. That's right about here. And then I'm going to go down from that maybe about a half of an inch or an inch. And then I can use a measuring tool like my brush. It's just a little bit higher than my brush to put a mark on the other side. So that'll give me where I want my gradient to start. I can just connect these two with my tan something like this and I don't need or want this to go up too too high so I'm just going to go a little bit further with this color before I start introducing my blue to the equation. We will when we put the atmospheric um, clouds and stuff on here that will definitely help to steer this in a in a um, more believable place but I'm thinking that that's pretty good maybe just a tiny bit higher on one side versus the other that looks good so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up my blue now knowing that this has some yellow in it there's going to be an area where this is going to look a little on the greenish side so you're going to you're going to sense a little greenish hue as you go through this and you could certainly counteract it if you want to I just put a little bit more of that um, tan on my brush so I can get these to blend just a little bit better um, but I think it looks super cool in this composition so I'm gonna leave it because this sky is a big huge prism of colors um, but if you also wanted to you could certainly wash your brush and get some of that yellow or that tan off of there but I'm just gonna keep going up with mine I keep loading up that dark blue and what will happen is that tan will eventually just kind of work itself off of my brush. And me knowing that this is going to have, we're going to put lots of um, information on top of this, I know that I don't need it to be a uh, really soft gradient, meaning that it's perfect from one side to the next. This is just clouds floating by and atmosphere, or the maybe not clouds yet, but um, just the atmosphere will have these different type of soft, layers to it. So I just keep picking up my dark blue as I go up towards the top, giving myself a nice second layer on this. And then you could certainly put another layer on it if you wanted to smooth it out any further, but I'm thinking that I'm going to be able to ride with mine. Um, so once you've got yours into a place that is pleasing to your eye, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some stars. I am using my large bristle brush. The color I am using in this step is just white. I'm gonna be using white and water. I'm gonna be making a mess <laughs> when I paint my stars. So if you do not want your hands to be messy, you're gonna to have to wear some gloves if you wanna use my technique. And you will also just be mindful of everything else that is around you because I'm gonna be taking my bristles and kind of splattering it onto my canvas. So I can't control all of my dots. <laughs> I want a million stars and this for me is one of the fastest ways to do it. If you don't have this kind of brush, you can use like an old toothbrush or something. What I like to do is I'm gonna, you could do a couple of different um, ways, but my water or my paint has to be fluid. So what I like to do, I'm gonna put a little bit of white paint on my brush and then I can dip my brush in my water and then just kind of tap it off on my paper towel maybe a little bit more paint than that and then I need my bristles to be stiff so what I like to do is kind of hold my bristles tight like this and then I'm going to use my pointer finger and I'm going to start flicking it so for me oh, I think I need more moisture because it's not flicking as much as I want um, for me yeah there we go I needed a little bit more moisture and I don't know if you can see on camera, but I'm taking my finger and doing this. So that's going to um, flick on like millions of stars. So maybe not millions, but definitely thousands. <laughs> I want it to have a lot of um, a lot of stars. So because 
that's what I'm, I'm using a photo reference as my reference today and it has a ton of stars. So you just keep, uh, my hand is getting super wet, so <laughs> just dry this off. And it's okay if you get stars down here because that's going to be covered up by land and by the, the lavender field and all that good stuff. So that's why I opted to do this first so we didn't have to run into um, that. It didn't matter if we got s stars all over this. And I'm just gonna add more water to my equation. So <laughs> I want it to be nice and starry. So I just kind of keep adding until I feel like I've got enough on here. You can make as many as you want or as few as you want, but I'm for me, the more I do, especially in a galaxy type of um, painting like this, the more stars that are in that sky, the more I'm gonna be able to play with that atmospheric dimension because I'm going to be putting um, clouds and stuff floating by and the white of these stars is going to kind of amplify the colors that we're going to be putting in the atmosphere. So that's why I'm kind of going to town on this and making sure that I have, you know, as many as many stars as I want. You could also take, if you wanted a couple of super duper bright stars, you could take your small brush your small round brush and make a couple of bigger ones. That would be up to you. Um, the photo reference I'm using does have a couple of big ones, but you could also do that later. Um, that could be one thing that you kind of add to add to the effect later. And then again, just make as many stars as you want. And when you're done, I might sit here and make myself a few more as well. But once you're done, we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and probably your hands and maybe your your area around you. We won't do this again in this in this painting. Um, so you can clean up this mess if you want to. <laughs> and then uh, you can wash this brush and let me get my cup here. Get ready for the next step. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint some atmospheric dimension. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors I'm gonna be using are purple, uh, cobalt blue, red, yellow, tan, and white. And if there's any other colors that I want to use along the way, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna premix myself two more custom colors. I'm gonna premix myself a pink, oh no, three custom cost colors. Pink, dark magenta, and orange, and I have made them magically on my palette here so you can see where I'm headed. I'm gonna use my number two round to, as my mixing tool. So this is my orange color right here. How I achieved this is mostly yellow with just a tiny touch of red. So I just want something that I'll be able to go to during um, this atmospheric painting process that will give me some warm tones. So this will be kind of a little accent color that I use. So that's the orange. I'm gonna wash my mixing tool. The next color is pink right here. How I got to this is a little bit of red and white. So no fancy uh, recipe here. More white than red, something like this. Maybe just a little bit more red than that. <laughs> And again, this is going to be just an accent color for the in the clouds that are just drifting by. So something like that will be where I have my pink. The next color is going to be dark magenta. So that color is right here. I'm going to be using lots of different purpley type of tones. So this one um, steers a little or leans a little bit more onto the red side. So that's why I'm calling it magenta. So how I achieve this is my purple violet, which is very bluish. I add a touch of red to it to bring it into that um, more um, kind of magenta realm and a tiny touch of white, just a itty bitty bit of white, start spinning it together and seeing what happens and seeing if there's anything else I want to do to it. So that's a little bit too on the red side. So I'm going to actually add a touch more of the violet to it. So violet again is a bluish purple and I wanted this to be more of a reddish purple or a warmer purple. So that's where I'm calling it magenta. So here we go. That looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to put my mixing tool away. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to be using my 
violet purple and adding a glaze of sorts on the right hand side of my sky and then I'm going to come over to the left and add blue, my cobalt blue. And a glaze is where I'm going to be able to see through it. So I'm not going to use a lot of paint, but my paint uh, is transparent because it's a student grade paint and there's not a lot of opacity to it. So I can put a tiny bit of my purple, my purple violet on my brush and I can start rubbing it over my stars and you're going to still see the stars. So this is just adding a hue or a glaze on top of it. If you have heavy body paint, you may opt to um, put a liquid medium within your paint that will, that will allow you to glaze it like this, which is allowing you to see through it. So I will use a little bit of that magenta type of color in a little bit, but this is going to um, get me started to where I want this to be headed. So I'm going to bring this a little bit almost crossing over this halfway point and then I'm going to start to do the same thing with my cobalt blue. I didn't wash my brush so if there is any of that purple on and I'm in essence kind of scrubbing it on so it's really just kind of allowing for the the hint of this tone to take place. I actually think I want to put a little bit of the purple up here in the top left hand corner just so it's kind of giving me a, a, a prism of sorts. And now I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that magenta uh, type of color and put maybe a little bit of that over in through here. Now, because I used white in this magenta e mixture, I have to just make sure that I'm scrubbing it thin enough so I can see those colors underneath. And of course you would have wanted that base coat to be dry underneath there. Um, so that looks, really good <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> so now i'm going to start adding what would be in the photo reference i'm using has these kind of this cloud formation kind of coming up the middle and some little atmospheric clouds along the sides so i think i'm going to just pick up a tiny bit of my tan right now just a little bit of tan on my dirty brush and i'm going to just start kind of adding in these little wispy clouds towards the horizon line. So again, hardly any paint on my brush. And as you're doing yours, if you're finding that you're, you can't see your stars through it or your paint is really too heavy, just again, find a way to add a different, you know, a, a, to change the viscosity of your paint, make it a little thinner, a little thicker. I'm gonna now pick up a tiny bit of my um, magenta type of color so I can kind of allow for some of these colors to, take shape over on this side. So again, hardly any paint. I'm not gonna be able to say that enough in this process. Um, so just little bits of paint will give you that atmospheric dimension. Allow, I'm using a, a, a firm brush. So again, I just picked up the magenta. So my firm brush allows me to kind of scrub the paint on here and allow for those, um, allow for it to be trans a little bit even more transparent um, just a little bit more of that magenta i'm really digging how it's looking on top of this tan so that looks pretty good and now i'm going to start kind of building up in this center i think i'm going to pick up more of the magenta to give myself um just it looks like it's kind of a little bit to there's a dark area right in through here i'm just going to kind of wing this over here put a little bit of this magenta this is looks like it's kind of um the magenta is kind of heavy on the exterior of these little clouds or some of them so i'm just kind of um, working with a color pattern that i'm uh, that i'm seeing in the photo i'm picking up a little bit of that tan now so um the tan is going on my brush and i'm finding myself kind of the center of that uh canvas and it looks like the cloud is pretty heavy in through here. So that's where I'm gonna put the heaviest of my paint, the heaviest of that light color. And at this point, if, you, if there's some areas that you can't see through the paint, that's okay because this is kind of a cloud, uh, atmospheric type of cloud. So it, it looks a little bit denser um, down towards that horizon line. So if you feel like mine is even um, a little thicker so in through there, I used a little bit more paint so that way it uh, was less transparent. And I see kind of a, a 
little gap of clouds in through here or a little formation of them. So I'm using that tan as my kind of dense cloud maker, um, but you could certainly use anything you want. I'm actually seeing some darkness in the sky coming in through here too. Uh, I guess I could amp that up, but I'm not going to yet. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of that pink color because I see some pinks and just a teeny tiny bit. I don't want to overdo this, so I'm going to just kind of put a couple little splatters of my pink and just kind of rub it out. Just li This is just going to enhance those little bits of um, these clouds in through here. I feel as though I should be bringing this a little bit more over to the left. So I'm using the remnants on my brush to just kind of extend this little cloud formation a bit. Um, maybe just a little bit more up and through here. Now I'm going to pick up a teeny bit of um, maybe that orange. I'm going to go for a tiny bit of that orange right now. I feel like I want to just kind of introduce a little bit of this into here because I'm feeling like there's a little bit uh, it all, it doesn't read as fiery in the, in the photo, but it definitely has some some warmth to some of these tones. It's got warm tones and cool tones. It's just a, a I used the word prism uh, prismatic before because it there's just so many colors in this which I think are fascinating. So I've got a little bit of that orange on my brush and again not a lot but just a little bit and you can see those dark spots pretty kind of emerging. Um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the tan plus a tiny bit of white. So tan plus a tiny bit of white. I feel as though there's a pretty uh, bright spot in through here so I just want to make sure that I've got those lighter spots um, and I'm just kind of tapping my brush and, and rubbing it a little bit so I can get the, that fluffiness to it without, um, without over painting. I hardly, again, have hardly any paint on my brush, allowing for the, the um, bristles to, to kind of rub it out a little tiny bit more white and my tan. My tan has a lot of yellow in it, so I'm, I'm using that to my advantage. Um, because that will give me these warm little pockets of these um, these clouds. So something like this. I definitely know also that um, I will most likely, once I've shown you guys how to do it, I will most likely um, step away from my painting and look at this from a distance because there's so much um, dimension in the photo and for me to kind of sit so close like this and think that I'm going to be able to do it in justice. I might have to do a little bit more work on it from stepping away from it and looking at it from a distance, but um, I'm thinking that that's pretty good with getting a lot of the dimension in here. Maybe I'm trying to think of where I want more. You could also, I'm going to wash my brush for a second here just to give you a little, another little um, sampling of something that you could do if you wanted to. Let's say, like I feel I, I want this a little bit more lighter blue than it is. I could, I wash my brush. I could take a tiny bit of my cobalt blue and a tiny bit of white and again, I can't stress enough tiny bit, wipe it off on your paper towel. So this is cobalt blue plus a touch of white and you could add an even lighter kind of dimension to the sky in through here. Um, again, I'm just going off of what I'm seeing in the picture. It's, again, difficult to um, do this type of atmospheric dimension with tons of paint on your brush. So just be mindful of that. And as you go through the process, just little bits of paint, it, the paint will dry on the canvas fast, which allows you to build those layers. I can do the same thing over on this right hand side like I did here. I like that. So maybe I do that with a little bit of my purple um, with a tiny touch of white. So give it that same kind of um, lightness, again, wiping it off on my brush, but maybe with what will appear to be more of like a little lavendery tone. So again, as you're going through yours, that's too much white, so I keep picking up more of my, more of my lavender. Um, as you go through yours, say now that's too much paint for me, so I'm wiping my brush off, and now I can start rubbing this out. There we go. So I, I just needed to know right away that that was too much paint, so I had to adjust quickly in order to make sure that I didn't um, bring that too far. 
and then I can kind of pop this color in in a couple of other little areas. I feel like I want a little bit more of that magenta right in the center. And then again, you're not going to get this exactly like the photo because it's there's there's too much information to get it spot on with every little piece of the the cloud formation. But if you can uh, get it something representational of this very cool atmospheric sky then you have you have won <laughs> because these are really cool galaxy type skies to do and if you can get these colors to look like they work together and are talking together that's pretty awesome and then um we are going to be using um I'm, i want to use the same brush for the next step so once you've got this done Oh, you could also go into your dark blue too. If you felt that you went too light on any area, remember your dark blue is your original color. So you could take, a, I just picked up a little bit of my dark blue. You could take a little bit of dark blue in any area and you could just kind of pop in some little dots of that color and that will that will push anything back that you might have put too much paint into it but again just little tiny speckles will will help you out there and then once you've got it into a place where you feel is pretty fascinating because i i'm digging mine <laughs> you can put this brush away or no wash this brush and dry it and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we're gonna do the first layer of the landscape. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint. The colors that I'm gonna use are dark blue, black, and white. And what I'm gonna do, there is a distant kind of um, hillscape, mountainscape off at the top of our horizon. So I'm gonna be using dark blue to put that in because it's gonna, we already have dark blue here, but I want to give it the same kind of profile that I'm seeing in the photo. And then at the bottom of the um, mountain or hill range, there's almost like a, a fog at the where it meets the ground level. So I'll go dark blue at the top and then at the bottom I'll put a little bit of the dark blue plus white to make that little fog. We'll be putting trees and stuff on front of it later, but that'll be that. And then in the lavender field I'm going to be using black paint um, to kind of separate the rows of the lavenders and I'll show you how to do that with some perspective so I'm going to first start with some dark blue on my large brush so dark blue is going on I want to kind of control the tip of my bristles. So what I do, I'm gonna bring my palette actually up to the up so you can see. I actually take my brush and I put it in the paint and kind of squish it in the paint and that will bring my bristles together like this, which allows me to get a pretty clean line, um, which I'm gonna want for the, the top of the mountainscape. So this one, again, I'm just kind of going off of what I'm what I'm seeing in the photograph, but you could certainly make yours into um, an imaginary place. You can do whatever you want. This particular um, landscape, I think, was in Europe. I'm going to get that information by the end of this video. <laughs> but, um, so this is of an actual place, but if you want to make yours an imaginary place, you can certainly um, put any little kind of scape of sorts off in this distant background. Maybe you do whatever it is out your back door and make it into something local for yourself. So once I've got that on there, I'm just gonna kind of paint in this whole um, additional area in through here. And then I'm going to, I'm only bringing this down maybe about an, another inch or so down um, into what is the, the, the regular landscape. And I'm painting uh, over any stars that I might have gotten in my landscape. So something like that. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint on my dirty brush. So just a little bit of white paint on my dirty brush. And this is going to give me um, that lightness at the bottom of this, of this land. So just a teeny tiny bit on my brush. And I just need it right down at the bottom of that landscape. And it doesn't have to be a clean line, just something that's going to give you a little bit of what's going to look like fogginess at the bottom of that landscape. So now I'm going to wash my brush. So wash my brush. 
I'm going to put in place my, um, I'll call them my lavender row tracks. <laughs> so it'll be kind of the dark space between the rows. Um, there, I have a lot of perspective on this, which means that is really far away. And the lavender uh, flowers that are close to the viewer are super close. So there's going to be really skinny rows up at the top. And then I'm only going to have like four that are going to be evident down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some black paint on my brush so I can give you a couple of markers. On the left hand side of my canvas, I'm going to come up from the bottom of my canvas. Um, if this is about halfway and this is about quarter way, I'm a little bit below that. That's going to be my first marker. That's going to be with black paint. And then I'm going to come to the bottom of my canvas and go to the right of that, maybe about one, two inches, give myself another marker. And then I'm going to come up on this right hand side. Again, if this is about halfway up or down my canvas, I'm probably one, two, about three inches below that. Give myself another marker. So I've only got three markers for these rows. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find myself the center of my kind of distant land. So somewhere in through here. And I'm going to come to the right of that just a smudge, maybe about an inch. So not as far as this marker, but just a little bit to the right of that. Now I just need to connect my dots. So I'm going to be connecting here to here to here and here. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to take it. I'm going to do my, my big one first. I don't need a lot of paint on my brush at this point. So if you're really overloaded, just kind of wipe it off on your paper towel. And I'm going to take and I'm going to give this a slight curve. So I'm going to take it from here, just bring it a little bit to the left and then just give myself a, a dark area in through here. I can make it a little bit wider as it's coming down towards the bottom. And you can even with your brush, just kind of give yourself these little kind of pull up marks, especially on that right hand side. If you do it a little bit on the left hand, that's fine too, but not as necessary. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing with this guy here. I'm going to connect it up to here. If you can get a little bit of an, of an arc out of it, great. If not, no worries. I'm using the side of my brush and just kind of pulling it from here and then just giving just an itty bitty bit of an arc, something like that. And again, heavier or wider at this bottom part. So I can just kind of pull up little bits of that darkness in through there. I just don't want a super clean line. That's kind of my whole goal here. And then this guy over here, this guy is going to be, um, you know, over in the distance. <laughs> so I'm going to just take him like this. I don't know why I'm calling into him at this point, but I'm going to take it over here. I'm going to, I think I actually want this one to be just a little bit to the right of that. So just a little bit to the right and then just kind of curve this in through here. And this one, again, where it meets this side of my canvas, I can uh, thicken this top part just a little bit. And that, believe it or not, is all I'm going to do for the base coat of my landscape. So we are going to be using our, um, I think I want to use my number two round for the next step. So you can just get that out and get ready. Oh, I need a sip too. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to finish this distant landscape, this little area in through here. I'm going to be using my number two round brush. The colors I'm going to use are black, white, yellow, and blue. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So what I'm going to um, first do is premix myself a green color. And I'm going to, I've already done that on my palette, <laughs> so you can see where I'm headed. I want to add a little bit of green into some of the foliage, so... I need to make my own green. So I have it on my palette here. How I achieved this is yellow and blue. Yellow and blue makes green. And then I added a touch of black to it to just deepen, oops, I need a little bit more black on my brush there, to deepen the tone a little bit. So yellow and blue again makes green and then a touch of black will just deepen that tone a little bit. So like a forest green is what I'm going for. 
So once I have that, I am ready to start painting. So all I really need to do here is maybe um, add a little bit of information into this distant mountain and then add some close-up trees. There's not much to this landscape, so we're just going to have some fun. Oh, and I'm using dark blue too. So <laughs> forgot about that one. So I'm going to first put some dark blue um, on my brush to just make sure I have this top area nice and colored in because I saw some streaking in my paint so just making sure that's taken care of and I can also put a tiny bit of white paint on my brush if I want to add any little bits of um, undulations in in the um, little hills not necessary but if you were confident in just kind of adding little light spots here and there that'll make it look like it's not just a flat um, landscape and then I'm just going to pick up a little, I'll put more light colors in in the center area because that seems to be where um, the atmospheric uh, stuff is glowing so that looks to be a good place to make sure that the uh, there's little light spots in the landscape so just kind of making sure I've got all of my spots colored in here I have a couple of little areas over here that need a little more attention and again, I'm just, this is the um, distant little hills that are being illuminated um, or setting a nice backdrop to this pretty sky, galaxy type of sky. So there we go. That looks nice to me. And if you felt that you needed any more work down below that, you could do that too. Um, you could, if you felt you wanted it lighter, you could add just a little bit more lightness down here. This is going to be where the... Um, there's going to be overlapping trees and stuff, but I feel like I just wanted a little bit lighter in there. So that looks good, but I definitely want it the darkest down at the bottom of the hill. So that way it'll um, look like it's kind of got some height to it. There we go. So now I'm going to add some trees and stuff. I'm going to wash my brush and I'm going to put black paint on my brush because a lot of these these trees are in the silhouette. So I'm seeing that there is a um, kind of a bush of trees in through here or a kind of area, <laughs> a bush of trees. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but there's uh, some land over here that is sitting in the silhouette. So it's really dark. So I'm going to just use some black paint here to start. Um, it kind of pops up with a couple of little trees in through here, little peekaboo spots of the back. Um, landscape so I'm just using black uh, again because this area to me in the photograph that I'm using as my reference is in the silhouette so it is um, we are we are as the viewer on the dark side of this um, of this land so it has a lot of black in it there's a couple of little um, silhouettes of branches and stuff up and through here so just past this um, this land right here I'm seeing some little tiny dots of what would be a little tree in through here a little tree in through here so it looks like there's just a couple of little leaves on these trees in through here so I'm just kind of lightly dotting with my black paint to give that illusion and then I can pull down uh, branches or trunks so the dots would represent the leaves and then these um, vertical kind of marks that I'm doing or diagonal marks will represent the um, the branches and stuff. So I think that looks pretty good. This, I think this needs to be brought out a little bit further. That looks good. So I've got some other areas of um, dark silhouetted kind of bushes and stuff. So all along this, um, where the what is the field the lavender field meets that back area there's a whole bunch of little kind of um bushes and i don't even i can't tell if there's um like buildings and stuff it looks more like um bushes it might there might be a little farm or something um that i'm just not really visually seeing too well in the photograph so i'm just gonna have fun making um lots of little trees i might do an impressionistic um, building with a light color in a minute but right now just kind of giving myself the um, the illusion of what I'm uh, gathering 
are, are seeing are to be trees, but you could, of course, if you have access to this photo, you might find that you're seeing it as something different, but I'm thinking that a lot of this is just trees. So <laughs> we're just gonna go for a lot of trees. So I think it comes kind of out in through here. And then we've got a whole bunch of little trees kind of popping up in through here and here and here. So I'm just kind of moving my brush in a circular motion to get these um, organic type of appearances to the tops of the trees. I think this one can be kind of pulled out a little bit more, a little bit more volume on this one. That looks nice. And then I think I've got a little, little bits over back in through here, something like that and maybe just some little low-lying stuff in through here. So now that I've got that on, now I just want to um, put maybe a little bit of green in some of them or little highlights or shadows or something. So I'm, I would just wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that custom green that I just made. And let's say I wanted it to look like there's a little kind of um, bush or lower-lying piece of um, foliage. I can put just these little pops of my, my green in through there. You could even pull a little bit on these trees. Wherever you want, I'm just kind of sporadically or chaotically putting it in here and there just to give me a little bit more um, dimension so it's not just flat black. Um, you could certainly do different shades of green. You could, you know, really just have fun. You could even, I didn't say I was going to use this color, you could even pull in some of your tan if you wanted there to be maybe some little pops of highlights on some of the exterior parts of these trees. So you can really just, but just tiny bits. Again, this is intended to look like it's in the silhouette. Um, so I wouldn't recommend going too hog wild when it comes to adding these additional things. Um, just kind of allowing yourself to be chaotic with it. Just minimal details will give you a maximum effect, well, especially when it comes to doing photo recreations like this. Um, maybe a little bit of lightness in between a couple of these trees will tell the viewer that maybe there's a little, you know, something in there. You could even put a little bump up with a light color. Maybe there's a little building or a little shed or something. And I think that's all I'm going to be doing for that step. I am going to be using my large bristle brush for the next step. So you can put this little one away, take out the large bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna do the second layer on the lavender field, or second step to lavender field. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna, again, use my number two round to demonstrate how to premix two more custom colors. So the colors I'm using in this step are blue, purple, white, black, and that's probably gonna be it. I'm going to premix a light purple and a periwinkle color. So periwinkle is a color that's kind of a cross between blue and purple, and um, that's where we're at. <laughs> so I've got my light purple that I'm going to show you first, which is right here. How I achieved this color is just my purple violet with a little bit of white paint in it. I don't want it to go too much lighter than my... Um, my purple violet, but I definitely want it maybe one or two shades lighter. This is gonna be the lavender part of the lavender color. So the next color I'm gonna go for is my periwinkle blue, which is right here. How I achieved this is my purple, blue, and a touch of white. So purple, blue, I think it's about equal parts of the purple and the blue, and then spin it together. Yeah, about equal parts of the purple and the blue and a touch of white, and this will get you into a nice periwinkle, bluish purple type of color. I could actually use just a tiny bit more purple in there. There we go. So once I've achieved these colors, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be uh, putting the, creating a dotted, a stippled type of effect for the um, kind of tops of the lavender field off in the distance. As I get closer to the viewer down and through here, these are gonna be more detailed and we're gonna have a lot more information in them. Um, so I will be, I'm gonna start them with this brush 
we'll put some um, more textured brush strokes in them, uh, but we'll finish them later with more detail to them with other brushes. So I will be alternating back and forth between my uh, light purple and my lavender for a few minutes until I get about halfway down my, or maybe about a third of the way down my field. And then I'm gonna start introducing a little bit of black into uh, the equation. So I'm gonna start by picking up just a tiny bit of my light purple. So just a little bit on the tip of my brush and I'm just gonna start dotting. I want the effect of that darker blue underneath to still have a say in this painting. So I do not need to do this 100%. Even if you have some stars still present, that's okay. By the time we've got all of our layers on here, those will most likely be gone. And if not, they can act as little sparkle parts to your, um, to your flowers. So I just picked up a little bit of my periwinkle and I didn't wash my brush. So I'm just using the tip of my brush, kind of allowing for myself to just kind of dot in here. You can even overlap some of the light purple a little bit. So I'm just kind of going in a linear kind of way, left to right using just the tip of my brush, kind of just tapping it into here like this. I've got both colors on my brush right now, so I might actually um, wash my brush so I can have a diversity or just wipe it off. If you feel like it's just one color, just a combination of them both. I want it there to be a, ver a variation between the two. So I just wiped my brush off, picked up a little bit of the, la the la uh, light purple. So I can definitely see that I've got some light purple spots as well as um, the, the, the blue, the um, periwinkle blue. So something like this. And you can see I'm allowing for some of those dark blue spots to still be. I just picked up some of the periwinkle so I can get some of that kind of sprinkled in here too. And it doesn't have to look like rose at this point up in the distance. We're not going for something that needs to look like rose. We're going for just something that looks like it's off in the distance with the colors that we, um, that we want for these particular flowers. So again, just kind of making sure I have a little bit of a variety of these tones, the periwinkle and the lavender and just kind of dotting them in here. And if you lose the, the definition between these four uh, separated marks, it's okay. We're, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll help you to kind of get those back in there. But I'm thinking for me that this is looking pretty good. That was a lot of paint on my brush right there, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it. So once I get about to, to this distance, I wanna start um, giving myself almost the appearance of the bushes being rounded. So I need to add some darker tones in there. So this is where I'm gonna pick up a little bit of black paint on my dirty brush. So let's take this, this far row for instance. What I would do with a little bit of black paint is I can take and I can kind of dot up a couple of dark marks, a couple of dark areas. So what that's gonna do is when we add the periwinkle and the light purple into here, it's gonna look like that's a separated bush. This one is gonna be really just um, kind of splayed out like this and in front of us, but maybe I have kind of a darker area back up in through here that's gonna separate this one from um, that next one. I can also bring some of this black paint down towards the bottom of uh, these front ones. So these bushes are gonna be kind of splayed out like this. So for me, on these couple ones that are really close, I'm gonna take a little bit of this black paint and just give myself the start of what's going to be those um, the real like taller close up um, bushes. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know the right words to use, but I'm thinking that that was okay to to say it that way. So I need those dark areas that are going to give me those shadowy marks in between the um, in between the bright lavender colors. So I'm picking up a little bit more black paint in through um, this side. I think I want to do what I did here. I want to do that a little bit over here. So I have the black. I can take, um, and I've already got this one kind of pulled up a little bit, but I can take maybe in through here, put a little separating 
darkness in through there, maybe scoot up in here just a little bit. So again, those little shadowy areas are going to help look, make it look like they're actually low-lying bushes. Um, this is going to be all one big one in through here. So maybe we've got um, the separating dark area in through here like this. This guy here is going to have so I'm leaving it light here. That's to me where I'm going to have maybe the, the top of this bush here. And then in through here, it looks like there's kind of a top somewhere in this vicinity. So we're going to put just a little bit of darkness. And this, these dark areas, again, are just going to help me build a lot of texture within, um, within the, the flowers themselves. So that looks pretty good in through there. Now I can, with these lighter spots, now I can start adding those periwinkle and the, um, and the lavender, or the um, light purple. So I'm going to pick up some light purple without washing my brush and just kind of uh, use more of an upward um, brush stroke as opposed to the dots that I was doing up top. So I'm going to transition into a um, directional brush stroke, allowing me to just kind of pull these up in an upward direction. So it doesn't have to be just totally straight up. I am going to um, curve them, kind of curving. Um, they're going to be shorter up here and then as I come down towards here they'll get longer and longer. They can kind of pull over like this. They kind of flop over the edges. So this is, I'm starting my direction of, of, the, um, of the flowers how they are laying in. I'm going to pick up some periwinkle right now so I can get some of that color in here. And again, just kind of flopping back and forth between the periwinkle and the light um, purple. I think down in through here, I'm going to just kind of dot, kind of dot and pull, <laughs> dot and pull something like that give me the direction and again I've got my we've got more steps to go this is just gonna get us started um, I just picked up some more of my uh, periwinkle kind of just getting this in through here kind of dotting and pulling giving myself that directional brush stroke and again not doing a whole heck of a lot but starting that direction um, to to work with when we put the when we go to um, put more detail on. And again, just kind of flopping back and forth between the two colors. And you can see it's starting to starting to take shape. We've got maybe some kind of coming out over in through here, flopping over this way. There we go, that's looking good. Maybe some of my light purple now. And because I had such a nice dark base, that um, that dark blue, it's allowing these colors to start to just really pop right off the bat, off of the canvas. So it allows me to initially get that um, dramatic kind of appearance without, without doing a whole heck of a lot. So I'm thinking that that is a pretty good start to this lavender field. We are going to be using, um, I would like to use my number two round brush for the next step. So once you've got this somewhere in this vicinity, <laughs> it doesn't have to be exactly as mine yet, but this is just something that'll get you started. You can put this large brush away, take out a small round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is uh, I'm going to call it stems. We're painting flower stems. I'm going to be using my number two round brush. The colors I'm going to use, I'm going to use that green, tan, and black. And if I use any of the colors, I'll let you know. So again, I don't need stems on the whole thing. I just, I want them to be pretty evident on these closer kind of bunches of flowers. And maybe a little bit on some, uh, you know, the evidence on these guys over and through here. I am going to be going pretty fast because I don't want to get hung up on doing one for one for one. So once I get catch my rhythm, I'll just kind of be sitting here flicking in the directions that I want to go. So I'm going to have uh, this is kind of one continual big bush in through here. I've got 
a couple of bushes in through here. So where you're going to see the stems the most evident is kind of at the bottom of the bush. Up in through here, I might see a little pops in through here. This one, I might see maybe some little pops coming over here. This one probably, you know, somewhere in through here. That's where I'm seeing them most evident in the in the photo reference so I'm going to kind of play it up with that. The black is going to keep me in control of making sure I still have shadow marks within there. So I'm going to start and you can even use a little bit of water too if, to, if you put a touch of water on your brush so the paint is more fluid. It will allow you to kind of pull those, those marks in a um, kind of more fluid type of way or rapid kind of fire way. Um, so I'll do some um, green ones. So just kind of doing probably <laughs> the bigger ones first. It doesn't really matter what order you do them in. Um, if you want at any time, just pick up a little bit of black paint too. That again, the black in conjunction with the um, lighter tones will keep you in check. And if you do a big honky one, <laughs> stupid word, a big large one that you don't like, don't worry, you can hide it with a flower later. So right now what I'm really looking to do is uh, give myself the visual direction of these. I'm just picking up a little bit of the tan plus water on my brush as well. Um, I want to give myself that visual direction so when I um, when the flowers do come on, in a little while, though, you'll be able to detect what um, what way that they are going, and the more the merrier. So don't feel that you um, that you need to be shy with the quantity because again, you can always dial it back when it comes to the um, when the flowers come on. You don't really need to do a ton up at the top, but if you're feeling like it needs some more shadowy areas, you can certainly just kind of put a little bit more black in there. I've got some over in through here. I feel there might be a couple little evidence in through there. And again, water on your brush is going to help you um, to get that little fluidity mark. And your marks should be smaller the farther up your canvas you go. Um, in order to get that dimensional element that we are, um, that it's going farther and farther away. So as I do this, and I don't want to forget to use the light color too. So as you're going through it, um, just remember to use that light color every now and again. Just pop little marks in through there. Um, this can be maybe a little bit higher up in here. And again, I'm going to have lots of additional um, information in here, but this is going to get me started. That green, I think I want a little bit more green in here. There we go. And maybe just little pops coming down in through there. That looks nice. Uh, in through here, I don't know if I would see a whole heck of a lot, but, or I don't know if I am seeing a whole heck of a lot, but we'll put a little bit in there just to make, make it, uh, have it, that type of detail. If you feel that you want more, you can certainly put more. I'm going to uh, pick up a little bit of black because I feel like I could use a little little black in through there on my dirty brush and then maybe a little bit of that tan. Again, just to put just a little, little hints of the lighter tones here and there. So that looks good in through here. I don't feel like I'm seeing a whole heck of a lot there. Might be little bits back in through here. And the farther away you go, the less you have to do, the farther away from the viewer. So as I'm going farther and farther away, I'm really just kind of um, just putting little tiny marks in order to, again, um, show the direction of what would be these, um, I'm calling them stems. And again, helping the viewer understand what's happening here. I got a, quite a bunch in through here. So this is going to be another um, aggressive area, <laughs> aggressive with my with my grass or my um, stroke making. And you can see how I am pulling, pulling these up pretty far. I'm using quite a bit of fluid on my brush. Uh, so that way I can pull these pretty darn far. And I'm seeing them kind of splaying out in different directions. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to pick up some of that 
uh, tan with some water on my brush, on my dirty brush. So I don't know, if I probably didn't say this yet, but I'm not, I'm not washing my brush throughout this process. So because I'm not washing my brush and I'm allowing myself to use um, whatever colors might still be sitting in my bristles that helps me to build a pretty natural looking area. So this one I see a lot of light uh, the stems here and then it gets dark again here so I'm going for a little bit more black on my brush to get um, a dark kind of pocket in through here. I'm not quite sure. Must be, I mean it's a bush. It's a bush of of flowers so there's probably just a little deep pocket in through there so I'm just gonna allow myself to to put some darker tones in through there again I'm working off of a photo so I'm 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 allowing that photo to steer me in in the direction um, that it wants to so I've got some darkness down at the bottom of this guy too so I'm just picking up a little bit more black and allowing for some little darker tones in through here these guys up here, I don't really see much, so I'm going to pick up just a little bit of the green on my dirty brush just to make sure that I have that textural element. And um, I'm going to, uh, up towards the top, I feel like I could deepen um, with a little bit of black some of these little rows. So I just put a tiny bit of black on my brush just to kind of deepen the darkness in between these rows a little bit. You could even put the illusion of a of another little, um, maybe not a whole row, but if you wanted to just kind of put a couple of little dark pockets in any of those areas um, off in the distance, you certainly could. Like right here, I feel like I could get away with a couple of little just dark marks. And that'll set the stage, explain to the viewer that there's probably rows off in the distance too, but we just can't really see them as well as we can see these ones. And I'm thinking that that's looking pretty good. I don't feel like I really need to do much else with those stems. If I have to work on them a little bit more later, I certainly can, but I think it looks pretty good for now. So what I'm gonna do for the next step, I'm gonna be using my, uh, my fan brush. So once you get to this stage, you can put that small detail brush away, take out the fan brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the lavender's flowers, lavender field. <laughs> I'm gonna use my fan brush. The colors I'm gonna use are white, light purple, periwinkle, magenta, and that might be it. I might use a little bit of that pink, but I'll let you know if I do. So what I'm going to be doing is doing highlights on these guys, on all of these little flowers, and I'm also going to be putting a more distinct textural element in the flowers that are closest to us. So I'm going to um, be using this brush and just making little tiny dots for all of these guys, but I need a little bit lighter of a color to do so. So I'm going to take my... Um, my number two round, and these colors that I have, my lavender, my magenta, and my periwinkle, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of white and lighten those up. Not not the whole thing, just a little, little section of each, so I have a lighter version of each one of those colors. So I'm taking just a tiny bit of white. That way I'm not um, mixing it on my canvas, which you can do too, but you might run into a over blending issue um, or too much white on your canvas if you try and do that. So this will just give you kind of a safety zone or a safe color to work with. And then if you want it a little bit lighter, you can certainly do that. So I'm just taking white and just adding it to these three colors in order to give me a lighter version that's gonna help me to get just little twinkle highlights on here. So once I've got that done, I can start, um, start I feel like I want to start with these big guys in front and then um, just put highlights on the rest because these guys need a little bit more work. So I'm going to first start with um, some of my uh, light purple and my magenta, that custom magenta color that we got. So I have both colors on my brush at the same time. And what I can do here is I'm going to I'm going to put the flowers in place so I can I can sit here and say, OK, well, there's there's a flower. There's a flower. 
there's a flower. I'm not over blending. I'm just taking these two colors and allowing, I'm using my, my brush on the vertical way um, to give me this appearance of these tall, um, slender type of flowers. When I come over towards, say, this right hand side, maybe I start to curve them a bit, allowing for some to overlap, but still allowing for um, you to see that direction of the flower. I don't always have to use just those two colors on my brush at the same time. Maybe right now I pick up a little bit of the periwinkle so I can start and show the direction of those flowers over there. So I can use a combination of those three colors. Um, I'm not going into the lighter versions of them right now. I'm just going into uh, the darker versions because I still have the um, the colors underneath that will support and push these colors forward a little bit more. So I'm going to just use those three colors, kind of alternating them. I'm going to go heavier, um, maybe up in this top left with them more concentrated. But right here, again, just my uh, light purple, my um, magenta, and my periwinkle, kind of getting all of that information in through there, kind of steering them this way. And these front ones are gonna be the, probably the most difficult, but as you work your way back, it gets a little bit easier. And then I can, I just picked up a little bit more of my periwinkle. And again, just kind of think of it kind of going up and kind of flopping over and just making them a little bit smaller the farther away you go. So again, periwinkle on top of the light purple, you'll see it better. So if you just put a, con a, 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 a different color on top of the one that you did initially, you'll be able to see it more. And again, we'll come back and highlight these in a, in a minute, but I just want to kind of get the big ones started while they're kind of drying. We'll go do the little stuff and then we'll come back to these guys and put highlights on them. So again, light purple, magenta, these are great colors to just kind of start these, um, these big front ones with and just kind of tapping it out so you can see pointy tops uh, or directional type of brush strokes. And you can see when I cross it over that black, you will be able to see it better. So popping little tones, little different marks with the different colors will help you to make it look nice and natural. And again, oh, that was a bit lot of my paint on my brush there. It's all right, we'll, we'll get rid of that and we'll just make it part of the part of the flower there we go and cross it over that black area a little bit so you can see it so i'm going to i'm moving my way back i'm going to pick up a little bit of that uh purple uh the light purple and again as i come move back i'm going to be uh making smaller marks but you can still show that there's little edges to them so that's where if you go over overlap it a uh, over that darkness of that previous row, that's where you're gonna to start to see um, all of those little differences and you'll be able to see that texture more. So in through here, these stems are the stems of these flowers. So that I, I wanna make sure my head understands that and I can bring some of those flowers into those stems. And that will, again, explain to the viewer what's going on. We're gonna pull these kind of flopping over the edge here. That looks nice. And again, I will come back with a nice highlight on these in a minute, but just wanna get these uh, started. So again, just a little bit over here. I think I am as I'm starting to move up into the top because these guys um, could support the um, another layer of those lighter colors back up here. I think they're just gonna disappear. So I'm gonna start using my lighter tones. I just picked up a little bit of my light purple, which are uh, which would be I'll call it lavender because it was light purple and then I added white to it. So we'll call that lavender. Um, and again, just the tip of my brush as I'm getting back into these farther ones, I'm not really going to need to do a whole heck of a lot of work. So I can just take the tip of my brush and maybe pop out some little ones. I just need to use those lighter tones. So I just picked up a little bit of the, the lighter version of the periwinkle and just kind of pop these little tiny sparkle marks on. Um, I do know that kind of the center seems like it would be the lightest. So maybe I pick up a little bit of my 
um, light version of the light purple and uh, the light version of the um, the magenta and just pop on a couple of little light marks up in through here and again just kind of get it to move back towards the viewer allowing the viewer to understand that there is light marks there's like little highlighted error areas um, I feel as though I want a little bit more of my purple so I went into my light purple so again if you want it to look like it, it is the type of field that these are they kind of curve so I'm gonna give the illusion you can curve these marks and that's going to explain to the viewer that there's kind of um, that curvature to it. If you add, um, you know, uh, with this brush, it's easy to do, especially on, on these back ones, because I can feel, I, I can push my brush and it makes an immediate curve because of the shape of the, of the um, brush head. So you can certainly do that in through there. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my light purple give myself these little curves over here just little itty bitty ones i'm going to pick up a little bit i think i am going to go for a tiny bit of that pink just a tiny bit of the pink with my um with my light purple on my brush i feel like i can get just these little tiny pops of sparkle highlights just kind of tapping on top to give myself that extra push on um, on the highlight so just itty bitty marks and again just allowing for this to really just feel like it's being kissed by whatever that um, light source is but still explaining to the viewer that these bushes are are on their rounder side and if you make it go too light you can always come back with oh that looks pretty you can always come back with uh, the deeper tones on top of it but I'm digging the way that this is looking so I'm just going to kind of use uh, this uh, pink with the light purple just to kind of give myself these little accents. I'm now using kind of the corner of my brush in through here just to pop up because these are really tiny ones over here just to kind of pop these guys up. We'll get to the bigger ones in a minute but these ones right here that looks nice to me. I can see the difference between them all which is great and just little bits there. I'm gonna come over here just so I can kind of pop little tiny bits over there. I'm gonna pick up, um, I think I'm going for a little bit of that periwinkle and its lighter version on my brush to um, kind of get these guys to start showing their, their uh, flower tops, <laughs> something like this. I'm gonna stick my head back, that looks good. Uh, picking up a little bit of my purple. So I'm just now gonna go kind of keep um, flopping back and forth between those colors just to amp up these little highlights as I'm getting closer and closer to the viewer. So these are gonna get bigger and bigger like this. And I'm going in towards those darker areas right now so I can just kind of pull, understand that these are part of that area that looks nice all right so into the big ones here we go so now what I'm going to do is just kind of concentrate on uh, this brush can give me some nice um, little marks like that which are fabulous they just it allows me to kind of give myself these lighter versions of this flower at the tips so I can use any combination of my um, that magenta e color plus my light purple, any of these colors I have here can be used to create these lighter tips um, because they're, they can come in, it's not just one shade of lavender that you want to use, you want to use a, a variety in order to get the illusion of the, the little petals popping with, with different tones. Um, I can say over in this area, maybe I use a little bit more of the um, of the periwinkle and now you can see just these beautiful little tips crossing over the um, Over the edge of the next row and then I can just kind of keep on with this But again, I don't want to use too much of the same color in one area So I'm going to just kind of dispense what's on my brush right now And then I'll 
hop on board with another kind of color combination. And again, just go in with that directional, um, allowing myself to see the direction of these, um, of these flower tips. So something like this. They're so pretty. I bet you it smells really great. <laughs> <laughs> the smell of lavenders. It's got to be an amazing smell. Considering we have lavender as our primary sm good smell in like shampoos and soaps and all that good stuff. <laughs> so it's got to smell fabulous in a lavender field. So again, just kind of working with the direction here. Maybe these ones kind of come up in this direction. And I'm getting bigger now with my, with my um, brush uh, marks because I've these are getting much larger as they're coming towards the viewer so or getting closer to the viewer um, and the only way that I'm going to get them to look separate from one another is if I use different colors for them so I'm just kind of allowing myself to progressively get lighter but not um, not white or anything like that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the periwinkle right now and you can see as they're getting closer to the viewer they are just popping and they're looking like they smell great. <laughs> so, something like this. And I don't want to go too light. It's intended to look like a night sky so I'm allowing these to stay on the darker side. I just popped a little bit more of that periwinkle which I'm totally digging that color. I'm digging all these colors together. They, I just um, I'm thinking that it's a it's a really interesting color combination that is building itself upon itself and it's um i'm i'm just digging it i think it looks really pretty so something like this i've got these guys coming in through here lots of lots of them in through here and then as always what i know that i'm going to do is once i've got um the majority of this tackled in a way that I think is enough of an explanation for you guys. I will definitely look at mine from a distance and see if there's any little additional marks that I wanna make. I might, you know, tap into, I don't know, a little bit more purple or a little bit more darkness or, you know, something that any, anything that I feel might amp it up a little bit, but I'm thinking that from this distance, <laughs> Where I'm, where I'm sitting right now, it looks pretty good. But um, I just picked up a little bit of my light purple plus a touch of pink. Maybe just pop a little bit of this. And of course, you can go for anything that you want. If you feel that that magenta plus a little bit of your your pink would would work to to pop out just the tips of some of these guys, feel free to do it. That's you know you're you're in control as to how how lit up you make this or how um, in the dark you make it. So it, the, obviously the, the brighter little pops you put, the more it's gonna look like it's being affected by the light source. Um, and if you make it too light, you can always come back and put, a, you know, bring back some of those darker tones. You can bring back um, or put some of the black in there or the dark blue, whatever works for you. I'm, I'm digging this. I think it's so pretty. This one might this one might get hung up in my house. I don't know. Actually, it's it's going to who? It's going to the person who took the picture. <laughs> so it's a pretty picture. I can't imagine how awesome this must have looked in in real life from the um, from the photographer's perspective. So once you've got this into a place that you like, uh, we are going to be using the small brush for the next step. So you can just. Uh, put this brush away, take out a small detail brush, and if you can ever stop these pretty flowers and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the lower left or the lower right. I will be using my number two round brush. I think I'm going to sign this in the lower left with magenta, my made up magenta maroon kind of color. So I like to sign mine with my initials, but you can sign yours however you want. You can make up a fun symbol. You could sign it with your full name. You can sign it on the back. Whatever you want to do is up to you because it's your painting. And those are the type of decisions that you get to make all on your <laughs> and that's going to conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very pretty lavender 
galaxy landscape painting. I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.